And so each time this happens, you have a choice. And it is the decisions that you make in those moments, which are usually moments when you're alone, which are moments when you're in your thoughts. Each time you're faced with that decision and you make the right one and you do push and you do move forward and you do keep taking one step at a time, it creates momentum. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I am your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! That's right. This is the Sales Wolves podcast, episode 138. And today's topic is well, I'm not going to tell you what today's topic is because it'll kind of ruin the first uh, thing I wanted to start with. So we'll get to that in just a minute. In this podcast, I really want to introduce you to two people. And these two people may be the most important two people that you ever meet. And I would beg to say the majority of you listening or watching this podcast right now, you haven't met them yet. But these two people, the interaction, the conversation, and ultimately what you do when you meet these two will determine the outcome of the rest of your life. And that is the winner and the quitter in you. The only way that you will ever meet these people, it's not easy, it's difficult, it's painful, it takes work, it takes guts, it takes determination. But the way that you meet these two, the winner and the quitter in you, is by taking yourself to the end of yourself. It's pushing yourself harder than you have ever pushed yourself before. Pushing yourself beyond any self-imposed idea of limitations, any self-imposed idea of what your potential is. It's pushing yourself beyond what you may right now think is possible. It is only in those moments where you're faced with these two, the winner and the quitter in you. And an easy analogy is fitness and and working out. And I actually did a video about this a couple of weeks ago. And it was after I'd done an insanely difficult run with a 32 pound vest on, it was four miles and it was the furthest and the fastest I'd ever ran with a 32 pound vest on. And it was just excruciating, Uh, very, very, very difficult. But it wasn't until I got to the point where I had passed the furthest I'd ever been before, I passed the three mile mark and was in that fourth mile and not only was in it, but was determined in that fourth mile to do it faster than I had done any of the previous three that I all of a sudden came face to face with this winner and quitter in me and the dialogue between you and these two is an internal dialogue. It's this internal dialogue and this conversation of, well, will I choose to go with the the winner or will I choose to go with the quitter in me? Because it's only when you're at the breaking point that these two pop up, that these two show up. And so in that analogy of, of fitness or, or working out, it's, it's pushing your body to the absolute, absolute limit or what you see as your current limit. And then they show up and then you have a decision to make. You can choose to, to be the winner, go with the winner. You can choose to be the quitter, go with the quitter. But another time that this 
interaction, this conversation um, pops up in life is when you're going through difficulty, when you're going through struggles, when you're going through pain. You know, that old saying, if you're going through hell, keep going. Like, like if you're going through hell right now, if you keep pushing and you keep pushing and you keep forging and moving forward, you'll meet the winner and the quitter in you. And in that moment, it is such a fragile, fragile, fragile moment in time. Because man, does it sound nice and feel good and look so appealing to just lock arms with that quitter in you and call it a day, throw in the towel, take it easy. But if in that moment you choose the winner, if in that moment you say, you know, maybe for the first time in my life, maybe every time I've brought myself to this point, maybe every time I've gotten to the breaking point of whatever it is that you're doing, I always quit. I always like the breaking points, the stopping point, right? Like when you work out, like when you get to the moment where you can't go any further, that's when you know, that's when you know when to stop. But maybe just maybe this first time when you reach that breaking point, when you reach that self-imposed limit, you'll lock arms with the winner in you and you'll just take one more step and you'll just do one more rep or you'll make one more phone call. You'll go knock on one more door. You'll do one more, one more, one more, and you will lock arms with the winner that is in you and you'll you go past that self-imposed limitation you'll go past that idea of the potential that you have you'll go past this barrier that in your mind can't be broken can't be overcome and it will unlock things inside of you that will carry over and overflow into every single area of your life. So the importance of, of meeting these two people is once you meet them to try to meet them as often as possible, but both of them will always be present. One never goes without the other. The second the winner in you shows up, the quitter will be right there and it will it will subtly creep in and give you every reason in the world why you don't need to keep going. Man, you've, you've already worked out once today. Man, your, your diet's been great today. Man, you made 100 phone calls yesterday. You don't need to do 100 again today. The quitter in you will always show up when the winner does. And so each time this happens, you have a choice. And it is the decisions that you make in those moments, which are usually moments when you're alone, which are moments when you're in your thoughts. Each time you're faced with that decision and you make the right one and you do push and you do move forward and you do keep taking one step at a time, it creates momentum. And the key to momentum is feeding it. So if the goal is to meet these two people, then the secondary goal is to make sure you're meeting them on a daily basis. Make sure that you are doing something every day, could be physically, could be mentally, could be with your relationships, it could be with your business, it could be in any area of your life, but making sure that every single day you have a conversation with the quitter and the winner in you. Because if you think about it, it, it makes sense. The more opportunities you have to choose the winner, the better your life will be. And the reality is you're never going to, you're not perfect. You're never going to win every single time. But by being aware of this and by possibly wrapping this framework around that, 
that circumstance or that environment gives you this awareness to know, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm at that moment. Like I'm 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 right about there. Like I'm I'm just about to hit that moment where the winner and the quitter and me are gonna show up. And then it makes you aware of the fact when you quit or when you let up or when you gave up. And you'll see the effects of that. On the other side, you'll become aware of those moments when, oh man, I'm, I'm right at, I'm, I'm getting close to my breaking point. Like I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. You keep pushing and you hit it. And then all of a sudden that winner and quitter and you show up and you will become incredibly aware of the moments when you choose the winner and how, like, what, what does that, what, what does that look like? Well, it's the most incredible feeling in the world. Like when you reach your limit and then you just blow through it and do more than you've ever done before, you feel, you feel invincible. You feel unstoppable. You feel like there's nothing that you can't do. And that momentum, that feeling from in that moment, from in that interaction with the winner and quitter and you and choosing the winner will carry over into the other areas of your life that day, that week, that month. But by continually every day seeking opportunities to push yourself that far so that that interaction exists gives you the opportunity to build upon it and build upon it and build upon it. So in the example I used with that run the day before I had ran three miles with that 32 pound vest on and that was the first time I'd ever done that. So when I went out the next day, I ran four. It's easy to get discouraged because just being completely transparent during that run, like towards the end of it, in my mind, the thought, the thought went through me that crap, this is now the furthest I've gone, which that doesn't make sense, right? Like I should have been like, wow, this is amazing. This is the furthest I've gone. That's the winner. But the quitter in me said, crap, now this is the furthest I've gone. That means next time I'm going to have to do more. And that was really freaking difficult. Like that was really, really painful. And now in order to meet the winner and quitter in me next time, it's going to be beyond four miles. It's going to be at four and a half. It's going to be at five miles, or it's going to be at a faster pace through those four miles. But unless I do that the next time, unless I run faster, unless I run further, unless I go harder, the winner and quitter won't show up. And that's the beauty behind this framework to control your life is that it will constantly force you to level up in whatever area of your life you're seeking to live at the highest level. Because the only time you will meet the winner and quitter in you is when you've gone further than you've ever gone before. But the second that you go further than you've ever gone before, the next time it requires you to go further. And the next time it requires you to go a little further. And the next time it requires you to go a little bit further. And what you realize in that process is that this idea of potential just simply doesn't exist. That any self-imposed potential Any idea of potential that you have of what you're capable of is a lie because you have that winner inside of you. It doesn't pop up out of nowhere. It doesn't come from left field. It comes from within you. So it's there all along. And when you have that conversation, when you meet that winner and quitter in you, it gives you the opportunity again to say, oh, yeah, 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 there's more left. I've got more in the tank. There's more possibilities. And you're capable of so much more than you realize. Your potential is infinite. And thus, I believe it doesn't actually exist. Because the idea of potential is a limitation. 
But the idea of having infinite potential and that each and every day I will just choose to go further and harder than I've ever gone. Well, that's the key to life and the key to your success and the key to going all in on your life. And so guys, the challenge from this, this episode is number one, if you haven't, then as quickly as possible, get introduced to these two people, go out and do something, you know, physically is it's one of the easiest ways to make this conversation appear, but it could be in any area of your life, push yourself harder and further than you've ever gone so that you can meet the winner and the quitter in you and make a decision at that point. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be the quitter or do you want to be the winner? Which do you want to allow take over your life and become the narrative of your story? That's it guys. This is episode 138 of the sales wolves podcast. As always, I am your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah-hoo!